Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our 1.4 Terraria modded tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to create an armor set because in 1.4 the format and way that you make an armor set has actually changed uh, quite drastically. So it is definitely going to be worth so it's going to be definitely worth going over it again and making sure that you know how to do it in 1.4. So let's go ahead and get started right away. So the first thing we're going to need is to have our mod uh, .csproj file or solution file open. I already have mine open right over here. And if you want to find your folder for that real quick, you can just go to your open sources and then you can see it's right here. You can click on your mod and then you can go ahead and open up the .solution file down here if you don't have it open already. Alright, awesome. So you should have that open now. Uh, and let's go ahead and navigate into our mod folder here and create a new folder called Armor. I already have it there, so I'm not going to create one. Uh, it's completely empty. I don't have anything in it. But just make sure you have a folder called Armor because that's where we're going to be putting all of our armor sets. Alright, so now that we have ourselves a little bit more set up to make an armor set, we have to talk a little bit about how it's going to work, because making an armor set in Terraria is not as straightforward as you might think it is. It involves a lot of sprite work. So let's go ahead and open up uh, our sprite editing software. So for this example, I'm going to be using the Steel Armor Sprite Sheet. So for this example, I'm going to be using the Steel Armor Sprite Sheet, which is the armor that I'm using in Archery Overhaul. So the reason why I'm doing this is because it would be very time consuming to have to create an entire sprite sheet from scratch again. Uh, and I really don't want to do that. It takes, it takes a lot of effort and uh, a lot of sometimes even trial and error uh, to get it right. The way that the new armor system works makes it way easier to add new and improved armor sets. And I'm going to show you why. So first off, the leggings are just the same. You know, all the frames for the animations for the player. And sadly, you do have to do that for all the leggings uh, and for the helmet. But usually the helmet is pretty straightforward because it's just the same frame copy and pasted like 25 times, which is uh, perfectly fine. And that will take you probably about a minute. Uh, and if you've already animated legs once or you have a template for them, you can literally just take that template and then uh, recolor them if you are kind of feeling lazy. But um, I would recommend maybe just animating it yourself. It's really not that hard, and if you just sit down and do it, it'll probably take you like half an hour uh, if, if you're focused. But here's where the problem used to be, was in the chest plate. Because if you remember, the chest plate used to have uh, the arms and the chest. So it was two separate animation files where you'd have to make all the frames for all of those. But now, they've condensed it into this one PNG file format right here. And this is what it looks like. You have your chest over here, and your arms, and then your uh, hands, or whatever you want to call them. And that's it. That's all you need. And if you look closely, you can even see that there's uh, a female chess play over here. And before you wanted to do this, you had to then create an entire new sprite sheet just for the female variant. But now, it's all condensed into this one much easier to look at uh, little PNG file here. So I'm going to be putting this on the GitHub for people to use, because even though if you don't use this directly, it's kind of nice just to have a reference for when you do end up making your own armor. Okay, because I already have all of these sprites here, I'm going to go ahead and save them. So let's go ahead and save as, and I'm going to save it in my Riptide mod, right over here, in my armor. And I'm going to save this as the steel chest body. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing for all of my other armors. I'm going to save them in my armor folder with the correct name. And make sure that when you're naming these files, that you name them appropriately. And what I mean is that when you create your chest sprite uh, for your armor, you have to make sure to name the animation file the same name as the chest item sprite, but with an underscore chest on it. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. So now if I come back over to my Visual Studio, you can see I have in my armor folder all of my PNG files. So like I said earlier, I call this steel chest right here and then steel chest underscore body. This is because this is how Terraria identifies a equipment type sprite. And you'll actually notice this with pretty much everything, including accessories. If you want to make like an accessory have like a balloon effect or a wing effect, it's actually like the wings PNG and then underscore, I think, body or underscore back. And that's how Terraria is going to identify these different attachment slots for your uh, PNG files. So just keep that in mind when you're making and saving these files. And the same goes for the helmet. You have an underscore head after it. And for the legs, you have an underscore legs after it. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to actually get started coding. So let's add a new item here. And we'll call this just uh, sure whatever. It doesn't really matter what this is as long as uh, it just is in C-sharp. Okay, wonderful. We'll say using Terraria, using Terraria.id, and 
using Terraria.modloader. Okay, awesome. So we're not going to need to do anything other than that, probably, for now. I don't know what you guys want to do with your armor sets, but if you're going to be doing something crazy, you might want to maybe add some more usings up there and get some more libraries. But uh, that's up to you. But for now, we're in our reptide mod dot armor, and we're going to create a public class. Well, this will be the ah, let's call it the steel helmet. This will be the steel helmet, and this will be the mod item. Okay, awesome. And let's make sure that we rename this file to our steel helmet. All right, next thing we got to do is actually make this item uh, equipable and equip the PNG file onto our player. So here we're going to say brackets auto load equip. And you can see it's uh, auto completing for me here. Um, we don't want it to be a body, though. We want it to be a head. Okay, and there's actually no semicolon at the end of this. All right, now inside of our public class, we're going to say public override void. Uh, we'll just say update equip. That should probably be the right one. Yeah. And we can autocomplete that there. I've gotten a lot of people asking me how I do autocomplete. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Just go up to your tools, into your options, and there's a whole bunch of awesome stuff in here. So you can see that there's a, I think it's in C sharp tools, I believe. It might not, it might be somewhere else, but uh, it's in one of these text editors things over here where uh, you can have automatic uh, completion of some stuff, and it's really, really great. So I definitely recommend just like, going into these settings and just seeing if there's anything that you want to enable or not because there's some pretty awesome stuff. All right, anyways, back to this. Public override void update equip player player. So let's say we wanted to increase our melee damage by 5% or something. Steel armor isn't going to be that good. So we'll just say player dot get damage uh, damage class dot melee. It's been a very long time since I've done this. Damage class dot melee is in plus equals 0.5f. Or actually, that would be insane. So what this would do is this would not increase it by 5%. This would increase it by 50%. We want to do a 0 0.0 at 5F. That would be what we actually want. So we could just leave it at that. But let's go ahead and add a recipe for it real quick. Public override void add recipes. So recipe, recipe equals new recipe. That's I think that's what it is now. It's something like this. Or is it create recipe? Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, awesome. And then we can just say recipe to add ingredient. And what do we want to add to this? Well, let's just get some iron. In uh, archery overhaul, there's a steel bar, but we don't have that in this mod, so. Oh well. We'll give it 15 iron bars, because why not? And then a recipe dot register. And I might do it to put this in here. It's possible. No, it doesn't want that. Don't do that anymore either. Great, awesome. So they really made uh, adding recipes much easier now, too. It looks like a little bit easier on the eyes. Okay, and just like that, we would actually have a working equipable helmet. But, of course, we don't actually have any defense or any defaults on this item, so it would be kind of a pointless item to obtain. So we're going to say public override void set defaults here. And this is where we get to do all of our fun stuff. You know, item dot defense. And I'll set to, like, four. Item dot, I don't know, value. Set to a thousand, why not? A hundred is uh, one silver, so it's like ten silver. And then item dot. What else do we want to give this thing? Uh, rarity. Item dot rare. Eh, set equal to blue. It's not that rare of an item. Steel helmet, I think, is. Actually, I think it's. Uh, is it green or lime? It's probably lime. I'd probably put it as lime. Um, and also, by the way, you don't actually have to say two for that. You can just say item rarity ID dot like green they also added that in there which is kind of nice they added a whole bunch of just like list of enums for all of these uh parameters now so you don't have to re memorize the actual id anymore which is what it used to be um anything else that i'm missing here item dot what else oh we got to add our tooltip public override void set static defaults tooltip dot set defaults and We'll say, what should we say for this one? We'll just say 5%. Uh, oh, that's right. We have to say 5% increased melee damage. Okay, and that's all. And then we can say display name dot set default because we also need to actually give this thing a name. We'll call this uh, the steel 
helmet. Okay, awesome. Okay, there we go. And that would actually worked just fine. And I'm going to go ahead and test this real quick because I haven't built this mod in uh, a few months. So I don't actually know. Okay, it actually worked perfectly fine. I thought it would take a little bit longer. Um, let's go ahead and build and reload and test out our mod. So open up cheat sheet. We'll grab ourselves our fake steel helmet. You can see this one is the actual one from Archery Overhaul. This one is the one we've just made. Uh, it doesn't actually give us any may I dimension archery overhaul, but for this one, it is going to give us some some bonus. Uh, let's take off our uh, the real steel armor and put on the fake one. So you can see it says equipable on it because we marked it as an auto load equip. So if we right click, you can see it equips, and voila, we actually have ourselves a, a visually equipping a helmet here. And you can see it animates perfectly fine. And if we get something like, uh, let's say we get ourselves like a powerful item, just to test to see if the damage boost is working. I think 70 might not be enough for a 5% difference. Let's go to the Meow Mirror. 200, 209. So we are getting a 5% increase in our melee damage whenever we have uh, this thing equipped here. Okay, awesome. So now that we have our helmet working, we can pretty much just copy and paste this code. So what we can do is let's go ahead into our folder over here and go into our, uh, if we can find it, our Riptide mod armor. I'm going to copy and paste this, and I'm going to call this the steel chest. And I'll copy and paste it again, and call this the steel leggings. And I actually have no idea why I decided to copy and paste it in the folder. That was kind of a weird choice. But let's go ahead and open up our steel chest plate right here, and make sure we change this to our steel chest right away. So that way we get all those errors uh, go away there. Okay, and then we're going to equip type this to our body, because our steel chest plate is an equip type of body. And we're gonna call this the steel, call this the steel breastplate. Okay, this will give us five percent increased critical strike chance. Okay, we'll give this six defense, a higher value, and the same rarity. And instead of saying player dot get damage class, we're gonna say player dot get crit chance. I believe. Plus, or is there something else I can do for that? I'm not sure. Player dot get crit chance plus equals five. I think is that all you have to do? Or damage you have to say damage class dot generic. So if you ever want to just do something for all damage classes, you can use damage class dot generic, and that will apply this bonus to the crit chance for all types of weapons. So like melee, magic, whatever. Okay, great. So that works just fine, and we'll also make this 25 iron bars instead of 15. So that should actually already work, which is awesome. Like I told you, we already did the code for the helmet, so it's just a matter of, you know, reformatting it for the other one. All right, let's open up our steel leggings and do the same thing. Change this to the steel leggings instead of the steel helmet. And that should also change, yep, all the stuff down there. Uh, and this is a cool thing about um, 1.4. And this is a cool thing about having your dot solution file open here. If you click on this little arrow, it'll give you a drop down of all of the different public overrides that you have. So let's say you want to find like an individual public override or an individual method. You could just go ahead and find it here and see if you actually have it or not, which is a uh, kind of neat. I've never used it, but it's there if you ever need to do it. All right. Anyways, let's change this to our steel leggings and we'll increase our movement speed by 7% or, you know, let's be generous. 15% increased movement speed. Okay. And defense is going to be five. Uh, value is going to be 1,500. So it's a little bit more than the helmet, but less than the chest plate. And over here, we're going to say player dot move speed plus equals 0 0.15 F. And that will increase our movement speed by 15%. And over here, we'll set our iron bar to 20. And also last thing up over where we say auto load equip, make sure we say equip type dot legs. Okay. And just like that, if we command S all of these files, make sure they're all saved. And make sure you guys double check that all of your PNG files are the correct names and have the correct like underscores and legs or whatever. Command S, go back into your mods, build and reload. Should be fine because we didn't really do anything. We just copy and pasted the code. Okay, so this is a very typical error and I'm pretty sure you guys probably spotted it by this point, but uh, it's, it's right there in front of your face. If you look at the name of my .cs file, notice how it's steel leggings. My PNG files are called steel pants. So that's a problem right there. It's not going to recognize that these PNG files are actually attached or are part of this .cs file. So it's not going to actually take a look at these here, which is why it's giving me a missing resource exception. So what we have to do is we have to change the public class name, steel pants, 
and we're going to have to rename the .cs file to seal fence. Okay. And that's really all we have to do. And it should work perfectly fine now. So let's go ahead and try to uh, build and reload again. Let's build. Okay, code is fine. Build and reload. And no errors. So if any of you guys have had that problem uh, pop up, just make sure that you go ahead and check all your file names and your public class names because that's probably why it's happening. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the rest of our steel armor. We already have our steel helmet. Okay, these are the fake ones. Okay. It's kind of confusing to have two of the same armor set. All right, so you can see steel breastplate, uh, steel leggings has the correct has the correct tooltips and improvements to our stats. So if we check our Meow Mirror, it says 4% critical strike. Equip that. Now it says 9% critical strike. So it is indeed working. And you can see the defense is also uh, going up correctly as well. Okay, and for our steel leggings, would give us five defense and 15% increased movement speed. Let's see how true that is. Let's equip them. Okay, you can see there is actually a decent bonus. You take it off, we're pretty slow. Put them on, definitely much faster. You can actually really see a difference there. Okay, awesome. Now that we have that all set up, let's go ahead and add a set bonus to our armor by saying public override bool is armor set. So a boolean type is something that is either true or false. And when we specify a return type here, say, for example, bool, instead of void, which just means it's not going to return anything, we then have to make sure we do return a value in this function. So... Here's what we can do. We can say if, uh, I don't know, head equals equals mod content dot item type, and then we have to specify the head type we want to be a part of this armor set. Actually, we don't have to compare the head because we're already doing this inside of the helmet file, which means the only two we actually have to compare are the body and the leggings. So we'll just say if body equals mod content dot item type steel chest. And uh, we'll say legs equals mod content dot item type uh, steel pants. Will they let me do that? If body dot type, my bad, and legs dot type. Okay, there we go. Took me a second to to remember that. Okay, so now that we have that, this if statement is basically checking if we have our steel chest and our uh, legs equipped, and if we do, then we want to return true. Otherwise, well, we're just going to return false. So you can just say return false there. And if we go ahead and uh, save and exit, and actually before we do this, we can actually see what our set bonus is, but we're going to go ahead and actually give ourselves a set bonus. So to do that, we can just say public override void. What is the update armor set? Yeah. And we'll just say player dot set bonus equals uh, what should we put in here? I don't know, plus 5 defense or something. That's a lot of defense. And if you want to increase your defense outside of the set defaults, you have to say player.statdefense. And we'll say plus equals 5. So hopefully that'll work. I actually haven't tested this method yet, but I will see. Okay, I mean, it compiled fine, but that's usually not always a sign that's going to go well. So, okay, <laughs> looks like it did. Awesome. So you can see uh, our set bonus is plus 5 defense. If we take off our helmet, which is 4, we lose 4, and then the extra 5 we would get from the set bonus. So the set bonus is actually working, which is pretty, pretty cool. So you can see how actually easy it is uh, to get a set bonus there. And if we take off something else, you can see the set bonus also goes away because we no longer have that chest plate equipped. And that's going to sum it up for this video. I hope you guys learned something new. I know it was definitely kind of a nice refresher for me since it's been a while since I've been uh, doing any Terraria modding. That's because I started to move away a little bit from Terraria modding and more towards game development. Right now I'm currently working on my game called Earthward, which I think really looks sick right now. If you guys want to support my work so the songs and from content, Seven content, make sure to join the Discord. I've also recently added in my Discord new subscription tiers so people can get really cool rewards such as early access to builds of my games as well as exclusive content clips and art uh, in the early access channel of my discord so i think it's definitely worth giving it a shot if you guys are interested but once again thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video